Good morning. It was a pretty exciting week for the church with the uh, conference and all. I don't know how many of y'all are policy wonks and followed any of that, but it, it weighed on my mind pretty much most of the week and running up to it. And I just want to give you some some thoughts on it about you know what now, what next, and you know what should, what shall we do? You know, division in the church is nothing new. It's been going on since since forever. You know, in Mark 11:15. It says, then they came to Jerusalem and he entered the temple and began to drive those out who were buying and selling in the temple and overturned the tables of the money changers and the seats of those who were selling doves. You know, there's two things that the devil uses to work on people, in particular worldly things. One is money and the other is sex, man. If you, if you can't get people stirred up and lead them astray with those two things, <laughs> you're, you're just not human. And, and they use those things. In, th in this instance, it was money. And Jesus, he didn't just say, Ah, uh, that's all right, I'll go somewhere else. Jesus said, I'm a clean house. And you know, and that's a good thing. In, in Proverbs, you know, there, there's a lot of people, and I'm, I'm probably one of them that wants to go yippee when something goes my way. But going back in, into Proverbs, it says, do not rejoice when your enemy falls, and do not let your heart be glad when he stumbles, or the Lord will see it and be displeased and turn his anger away from him. Do not fret because of evildoers or be envious of the wicked. You know, I kind of felt like it'd be great to do a victory lap that a conference went the way I wanted to. But, you know, there's a lot of people out there who heartfelt are so deceived that they really think that they're right, you know. And there were some people who were crushed. There were tears and, and whatnot. And did, did I cry with them? No, I didn't cry with them. But I really didn't feel the need to do a, a victory lap or a hoo -ha. And that just wouldn't be godlike because everybody... You know, sin is sin, and some folks celebrate it, some folks don't. We just need to make sure we're not celebrating sin. In James 5:19, it says, My brethren, if any among you strays from the truth and one turns back, let him know that he who turns the sinner back from the error in his way will save his soul from death and will cover a multitude of sins. You know, we need to reach the people and get things straight. Because there's folks that are just deceived out there because the leaders are deceived. You know, they didn't just come up with this idea on their own. They've been led down that path by people. And there's a, there's a cure for that. In Thessalonians 2, 3, 12, it says, Now such a person as we command you to exhort in the Lord Jesus Christ to work in quiet fashion, to eat their own bread. But as for you, brethren, do not grow weary of doing good. If anyone does not obey our instruction in this letter, take no special note of that person and do not associate with him so that he will be put to shame. Yet do not regard him as an enemy, but admonish him as a brother. Now may the Lord of peace himself continually grant you peace in every circumstance. The Lord be with you. You know, we can't just get worn out and we need to correct those folks who've gone astray and not just, you, you can't let them behind the pulpit. You know, there's a lot of control in the local church. It starts in the local church. You know, people say, well, my gosh, you're going to put people out of the church. No, you let people into the church, but it's up to the pastor's discretion to say, are you a member of the church? You don't put the people out. They're welcome to the communion table, but you put them in a, in a position of leadership. That's the spot for the pastor to serve. They had a big fight in Virginia over that a long time ago. You know what? They said the pastor was right. The pastor is, whether you, whether you think he's, whatever. Whatever you think of that guy back there, he's the boss, and he, run, he runs this local corporation, him and God. In 2 Chronicles 29, it says, And they assembled their brothers and consecrated themselves and went in to cleanse the house of the Lord according to the commandment of the king by the words of the Lord. So the priest went into the inner part of the temple of the Lord and cleansed it, and every unclean thing which they found in the temple of the Lord they brought out to the court of the house of the Lord. You know, the Jews did that a bunch, man. They had people move into the temple, bad kings and whatnot. They put their bad priest in there. Then they'd find the book, they'd read the book, the word get on their heart. What'd they do? They'd have to go in, they'd have to clean house. And then they, they'd start all over again. They didn't tear down the temple and then build a new one. They started over again. In Philippians 4, 8, to, to close, it says, Finally, brethren, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is good, of good repute. If there is any excellence, if anything worthy of praise, dwell on these things. And, you know, what I was really dwelling on 
is the people who came and was the big vote to swing the conference towards the right path down there were the African delegation. Who do you think evangelized the African delegation and turned them into Methodists? It was the Methodists. You know what? So there was fruit that was being born by this. And just to walk out of that seems kind of nutty to me. But, uh, you know, it is the, the church is God's. The church isn't ours. The church isn't the pastor's. The church isn't the UMC. The Lord's will be done. Amen? Amen. Dear God, Heavenly Father, we just we praise you for all you do. We know that you're in control. Sometimes we think we're, we're, we're a part of that, but we're just. As, as I said last week, we, we we're just tools. We're not agents. You're you're in charge of this train. You're in charge of this local church. You're in charge of the, the world church. You are you are the man who are going to make it happen. You sent Jesus to give us a, a way out of our sin, and we just praise you so much for that. We ask you just to help us discern what is uh, the right way to go and to be with us this morning as we study your word and just be with us, Lord, and we just ask you for your grace and forgiveness and we do all this in the very precious and strong name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen.